Thank you very much indeed. And this is the fight that the Bristol fans have certainly come to see here at the Whitchurch Sports Centre here in Bristol. They've never had so much as a British champion from these parts, though Nick Wilshire went quite close, I seem to remember, in the 1980s at light middleweight. Didn't quite make the grade. I think he did win a Commonwealth Championship. But um, Chris Sanagar, the local manager promoter in these parts, has worked hard building up a little camp. Ross Hale is very much the star of that camp. And here comes his opponent, the Colombian Regino Caceres, who's only 23. He's unbeaten so far. He arrives really as a complete mystery man. He's fought people you'd never heard of from Colombia, in Colombia, so far. And as they say in horse racing sometimes, he could be absolutely anything. He could be. This is this could be a very dangerous fight. It's always hard to tell. Caceres has a very good record, so you know how do you how do you match him? It's it's a tough one that the heel camp have, have took, but you know, good luck to them. They're sticking their man in. You know, with a guy who's got a good record. So let's hope Heel can pull it off. I tell you what, we've been watching pictures of this fellow working out backstage in the dressing room, and to me he looks loose and he looks mean and he's a fighter who's in the winning habit isn't he that's right he has never tasted defeat so obviously his pride is very strong and he'll not want to taste it tonight but looking at him just as he warms up in front of the cameras he looks very good very loose you know very natural always different to to take too much from that but you know he looks very sharp tall at the weight and one thing strikes me straight away look at that abdominal guard of his riding up above the shorts surely the referee's got to do something about that because it's guarding his stomach as well that's right it's very high well, they really have got to do something about that that looks way too high to me i remember marvin hagler used to have that uh, kind of protection sometimes as well that's and right. our opponents didn't like it that's right and also caesar chavez it looks as if his his abdominal protector was specially made it's very high well, the referee's having a look, but doesn't look very happy, but isn't doing anything. Now, here is Ross Hale. He will have sold a lot of tickets for tonight's show. His last appearance was on the Bruno Lewis show in Cardiff, and the camp tell me, there's Chris Sanagar on the right, he was telling me earlier that Ross Hale sold £20,000 worth of tickets for people wanting to see his fight with Carlos Chase on the undercard of Frank Bruno v. Lennox Lewis. So, they have hopes of him. He's a puncher, this fellow. He's developed into one. Former Dustman. This is his sixth fight in his home city, and he's produced some of his best wins here. He beat the Midlands champion, Malcolm Melvin, here. He beat the British champion, Sugar Jibaliru who was on the way down at the time in a first round here. He beat Mark Anthony earlier this year in the first round. And he scored, what is it, 11 knockdowns in this year's fights, including five against Carlos Chase in that fight in Cardiff last time. Dean Powell and Chris Sanagar in the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening, sponsored by Jarrett Construction and live on Sky Sports. Frank Maloney for Panics Entertainment in association with McMahon Promotions and Chris Sanigar present an international light welterweight contest of 10 three-minute rounds between introducing in the red corner wearing the red trunks with the yellow trim from Colombia, South America with a professional record from 20 contests, 18 wins and just two draws 12 wins coming by way of KO. Would you please welcome uh, Rahino Caceres? <laughs> and his opponent in the blue corner wearing the purple trunks from Bristol. A professional record of 19 contests, 18 wins, with just one loss, 11 wins. Great reception for Ross Hale. At the weigh-in today, Caceres scale 10 stone, 2 pounds. Hale, 10 stone, 1 and 3 quarter pounds. Your officials appointed for this contest by the British Boxing Board of Control. The timekeeper, Mr. Bob Edgeworth. The referee, Mr. Reg Thompson. 
Well, this fight was made at 10 stone and 2 pounds at the weigh-in. Caceres came in a quarter of a pound over that and had to strip almost naked to make the weight at the second time of asking. You'll notice that while the fighters were being introduced, the referee, Reg Thompson, and hats off to him, went over to Caceres and made sure that that protector we were talking about was lowered, so it is now no longer protecting his stomach as well. So off they go, Caceres in the red trunks, the local hero, Ross Hale, an important fight for him. He was quite tense about it beforehand. He knows it could be a bit of a test. And big things may be waiting for him. They're talking maybe even of a world title shot in the next 18 months or so against Charles Murray, the IBF champion. That's all down the road. First of all, he's got to get rid of this unbeaten Colombian. And how tough will it prove to be, I wonder, Glenn? Well, Hill has got to start this fight strong. He's got to have a very good start. He's got to try and hurt his man, which it looks like he just did with that left hand. Good left hook from Hale straight away. Looks like he's been working out quite a lot in the dressing room as well, Hale. He started off quite loose. And how good is this Colombian? That's what we need to know. He looked to get him with a good right to the body there, did Caceres. Hale will want a spectacular inside the distance win in front of his home fans and in front of the television cameras to put his name up in lights a bit. Hale, you'll notice, is a southpaw, leads with the right. Initially, Caceres looks very strong. He's really letting his shots go, but doesn't look too good on his feet. Just looks a little bit unorthodox in his movement, but a good stiff jab. Let him up, let him up. Tall at the weight as well, Caceres who has himself just switched to southpaw, interestingly. So he seems to be a bit of a switch hitter. Started off orthodox. Let's see if he stays with that. I think he was certainly shaken a little by that first left hook that Hale landed early in the round. Good right hand as well from Hale. Certainly full of confidence, Ross Hale. Having had that broken jaw, which resulted in his only defeat, he's come back very, very strongly with three inside-the-distance wins. This is a good opening for Hale. He's trying to take control. He's got the centre of the ring, and he's trying to make a serious move, which is a, is a good ploy. Caceres getting with a hurtful-looking right to the body. First impressions of Caceres, he's a tall, rangy, looks slightly unbalanced fighter, but throws punches from an orthodox angle. Hale looking to put the pressure on here. Yes, he doesn't look very good on his feet, Caceres. Even though he just looks as if his legs betray him a little bit. Yes, there are times when he looks almost as if he's got ice skates on, doesn't he? That's right. But one thing he does look is very strong. One of those punches from Caceres seemed to stray a little bit low. But the Colombians usually come out of a pretty tough school. End of the first round, I think Hale would have probably done enough to take that round. And there he is, Ross Hale, 18 wins, 11 of them inside the distance. And most of those inside the distance wins have been in the recent fights. He started off as more of the boxer type. Yes, that was a good first round for Hill. He took control from the middle of the ring. Some good work here from him. There's that left hand. It was a bit long, and Caceres just got on the end of it, or it could have been a more damaging punch. There it goes. Ross Hale, who comes from the Kingswood area of Bristol, and there are several members of his family and friends who are here watching him in action tonight. And he knows that he's in the national spotlight. One of the biggest shows they've had in Bristol in recent years. And promoter Frank Maloney and Chris Sanagar saying, you've got to turn up at this show if you want more of the same in this city. Hale in the purple trunks. The Bristol man fighting in Bristol against this Colombian, Rafino Caceres. Caceres favouring the body, takes on a short right hand, puts Caceres down, and I don't think he's going to get up from that. That looks like curtains. Lights out, good night. And it's a second round knockout. 
for Ross Hale, and it was a short little right hand, but what power it must have possessed. Caceres was not sparked out by it. Obviously, that was a very strong shot, and I think it, it was a very surprising shot. Caceres is he's mourning, he's very upset by that decision, but he was out, he was definitely hurt badly. Here it is again, Glenn. It just seems to be a little short punch, but obviously it had a great deal of power. A little short right hand. He really set himself for the punch. Watch how he plants his feet before throwing this right. Watch, there. It's almost a short sort of jab right hand. And he did him, and obviously the legs just failed him, and he's in desperate trouble. Well, we thought this man was a power puncher, and I think now we know it. Caceres has gone around protesting about what, I don't know. He was counted out. S simple as that. And now he's uh, accepted that Ross Hale has beaten him fair and square after the initial protest, but Hale moves on to 19 wins and one defeat, and nothing wrong with that. Frank Maloney there must be very pleased with it, because it means that Hale, first of these four fights he has with Maloney, can be pitched on and maybe moved up in class a wee bit more as well. Here's uh, MC Mike Goodall to tell you it officially. Ladies and gentlemen, after 33 seconds of the second round, Caceres having failed to beat the count, the winner on a count out, Ross Hale! Well, it's a great night for Ross Hale in his home city, in front of his family and many of his friends and his supporters, and he's delivered a second round knockout of a fighter who was previously unbeaten. You cannot ask more than that. And I think this is a fellow on the upgrade. You're going to hear more of him, I think. He could take this light welterweight division, certainly in Britain, by storm. Andy Holligan, the current British champion, but Hale here making a name for himself with a knockout win and a knockout performance as well, Paul. Thanks, Ian, and that's lifted everybody's spirits. What a good performance that was. Billy Schwer, impressed? Very impressed. I'm sure he'd be delighted to get that one away in front of his home crowd. And he boxed very well. Mm. Started off at a very fast pace and caught him with a beautiful right end. Were there early problems for him? The Colombians seemed to be capable of throwing shots from unorthodox angles, but he seemed to deal with that problem very effectively. That's right. He was, he was moving around well to Colombia, and he was letting some shots go. As, as you say, he was whipping around to the body as well. But, um, as the fight progressed, he'd he done the job. He's very impressed. Andy Holligan's the British champion. How would you see this fellow getting on against him? That'd be a tough fight. That'd be an interesting fight. I'd look forward to that. Um, Andy Holligan's a very good fighter as well. It'd be a, it'd be a, I think that'd be a bit of a war, that one. But, um, it'd be a, I think that'd be a bit of a war, that one. But um, I think Andy Holligan would do him. Ross uh, Hale, what sort of a contender would he be in terms of the problems he'll create for Holligan? Oh, he's a very good boxer. He can, obviously, he can punch as well, so he create a lot of problems for him. Mm. And um, he's improving all the time as well. He's definitely improving his reputation as a puncher. When he came into the game in his early fighting days, he was said to be something of a, a boxer and a mover, but clearly he's starting to, to knock people out. So is he developing the power as he goes along, or is it development of boxing skills and, and better punching power? I think it's the development of everything he's got. But as you say, he's developed his punch over the last few fights, and he's, he's got a good dig on him. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. From what you've seen so far, I mean, somewhere down the line, Ian mentioned in commentary, they're actually thinking about the possibility of a world title fight against the IBF champion Charles Murray. Um, is that feasible? Do you see that he's got that amount of ability? I think give him a few more fights, a little more time, then, then he'd be ready. But I think at the moment, it may be a bit early, but he's definitely got the pedigree to get up there. Talk us through the end of the fight again, Billy. I think we can see the crucial moment in round two again now. Here we go. Here we go. It's working well to the body. And here he goes. He whips in that body shot, the Colombian. And it's just a, a short, crisp, sort of like, more like a jab, really. Mm. Right on the chin. There's no way he's going to get out from there. Might see better exactly how he did the damage from this angle. Short right hand. Bang. Light welterweight from Bristol in front of his home crowd is making a name for himself. Ross Hale demolishing the Colombian opposition almost by the shortest possible route tonight. And I believe he's now cooling down and talking to Ian Dark. Let's have a word. Well, here he is, uh, Ross Hale. That was a, a spectacular performance, Ross. Just talk us through it from your point of view, because I know you were quite tense about this fellow beforehand. 
yeah, it really was an unknown quantity. But I didn't know, I didn't know if he was a southpaw or how he boxed, but he shaped up quite well, I thought. And I just really got glad with the, resu the result, actually. Yeah, that's it. You've beaten an unbeaten fighter who arrived as a bit of a mystery man as well. A bit of a nerve-wracking occasion for you, fighting a fellow like that, and, of course, with so many big plans around the corner for you. Yeah, um, it was nice to get over and done with quite fast, but I didn't know what to expect, and uh, it's nervous being on uh, Sky Television. <laughs> I, I thanks Frank and Chris Sanagar for giving me the opportunity to box on Sky. And... Um, that's all I can say, really. Well, you put your name up in lights a bit there tonight. I think a few more people will have heard of you nationwide after that. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but I've been underrated because we come down Bristol. But um, Chris is pushing us forward, Frank's pushing us forward, and hopefully I can get the opportunity to fight some good, real, world-class opponents. You used to have the reputation, really, of being more the boxer than the puncher, and now you're knocking everybody out. You'd had 11 knockdowns this year. That was the 12th. What's happened to change things? I've just been training down... Uh, with someone really strong, Amir, and he's been putting us for our paces every day, and uh, it's good strength training. And that's it, really. It was just a short little right hand, wasn't it, that finished it? Nice little jab, yeah. A quick word with Chris Sanagar, your manager promoter, who's done uh, so much to help you. What are the plans now for this fellow? Because he's definitely on the upgrade, isn't he? Well, I'm sure with Sky Television, we'll put a world title fight on here in Bristol. You know, the, the result, result was absolutely devastating. You know, I had a lot of people looking at me, you know, very oddly because I accepted this fight. But I've got every, ability, you know, confidence in Ross's ability. And I think he will go on and win a world title for Britain. And Charles the Natural Murray, the IBF champion, your aim, I hear. Yes, we'll take him in our next fight. That's how confident <laughs> I am. Well, it might not happen quite that quickly, but well done tonight. Thanks for coming here. Do not adjust your sets. You'll see what I mean.